We are entering a time of remembrance, a time to remember Jesus Christ, his life, his sacrifice, his love. A time to remember that we are all invited to be with him at the table, sharing in his presence, hearing his words of challenge and call. Tonight, everyone will need a towel as the message focuses on Christ's towel. These are for you to take with you tonight that you may remember beyond tonight. Tonight you will be invited to meet Jesus at the table, taking a piece of the bread and a drink of the cup. Only 22 will be able to be at the table at one time. Dorinda Cassidy and I will reset the table between each group that receives communion. What wondrous love will be experienced as we remember Christ's sacrificial gift to each of us. Let us sing together. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. A meal of bread and the cup is waiting for us. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and to be served. As we break the bread and share the cup, our understanding may fail us. But we will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of Christ's love. There will come a day for each of us when we leave this earth and cross over to the great unknown. And as believers, we hold fast to our faith. It's a place we've never been. It's the great mystery. Let's say you knew it was coming. You had one night left on this planet. What would you say to your friends, your family? What would you want them to remember when you were gone?
Jesus knew he was about to make that journey. Newly arrived in Jerusalem, he'd gathered with his disciples for one last Passover meal. The atmosphere outside was tense, and inside, the disciples had been arguing with one another, feuding for his favor. Who would be most important? Who would get to sit at his right hand? Instead of declaring who would be in charge of what, Jesus filled a basin with water, draped a simple towel over his arm. He knelt before each one of them, washing their feet and scrubbing their hearts. Outside, the religious leaders were plotting Jesus' death, and inside, he's giving his followers a mandate, a command. Live humbly. Serve sacrificially and love others the way that I loved you. That last statement is everything. And Jesus was about to show the world exactly what it was like. busy, overrun city of Jerusalem at a time of festival. Holy Week is full of sights, sounds, and smells. Tonight is no exception. Jesus with his friends and followers are eating the Passover meal, rich roasted lamb, the worst job of the lowest slave of the house, he begins to wash the disciples' feet. Tonight is all about the towel, a simple cloth used to clean and dry all the dirt away. Hold the towel you were given this evening. Feel its texture.
Jesus was at another meal, and Mary of Bethany chose to break a jar of pure nard, beautiful perfume, and anoint Jesus in a supreme act of love, weeping and wiping his feet with her hair. Tonight, at this last meal with his friends, the smell of the perfume lingers. Smell the towel you are holding. Imagine being able to smell the perfume on Jesus as he bows to wash your feet. The smell of holiness, the smell of divinity lingers in the air. The towel you are holding is pure white. It is able to absorb all that is thrown at it, all the dirt and water. It takes away from you so that you are clean again. This is what Jesus does for you. He takes upon himself all that sin, all those wrongs, wipes them away. Mars, that's the Mars from your character. He is not afraid to face up to the smell and the dirt. Do you know what I have done for you, Jesus says? Tonight is not the only night we encounter a towel or a cloth. On Good Friday, Veronica will step forward in the crowd on the route to Golgotha to wipe away the sweat, blood, tears, and phlegm from Jesus' face. Bring your towel up to your face and imagine the relief of having your face wiped clean after being spat at. Do you know what I have done for you, Jesus says? And then after they've brought Jesus' body down from the cross, the women will wrap Jesus in cloths with a separate one for his head as they lay, gently lay him in the tomb, preparing to return in the morning with the spices for embalming. Do you know what I have done for you, Jesus says? Easter day, bring out your towel again, and remember how the head cloth was folded separately from the other cloths and the tomb. Jesus leaves the folded cloth, perhaps as a reminder of the Jesus the servant, Jesus the suffering, and Jesus our Savior. Do you know what I have done for you? Jesus says. God shows great love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then confess our sins with repentant hearts. Merciful God, we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised forgiveness to all who turn to you in faith. Pardon us and set us free from all our sins. Strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. What we are about to do in our worship, gracious God, has many layers of meaning and many names. Whatever we call it, its meaning is summed up in the earliest creed of our son's church, Jesus Christ is Lord. We speak of the service as the Last Supper because it was Christ's Last Supper with his disciples where the master broke the bread and poured the wine. We also call our action the Lord's Supper. Jesus was the host then. Jesus is the host today. Our worship is known as Holy Communion. It was his prayer that we should all be one in him and that our unity in him should transcend all barriers. It offers us a foretaste of the feast which your faithful people look forward to enjoying with your Son in heaven. And sometimes we call this act of worship simply the sacrament. Like baptism, it seals us as the body of Christ. This action is a sign of our allegiance to our Lord, repeated frequently for our nurture and growth in faith. Loving God, as we approach our Lord's table, we pray for the unity and peace of this worldwide church, for the well-being and effective witness of this congregation as we journey to hope. We gather around this table hungry for the bread of life that only Christ can provide. Amen. 
And as the children of God, we pray together as Christ leads. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All who seek to know more of Christ is welcome at Christ's table to receive the bread and the cup. Come as you are ready to be at the table with Jesus Christ.
Holy God, source of all love, on the night of betrayal, Jesus commanded his disciples to love one another as he loved them. We thank you for receiving our prayers, teaching us through your acts of service and feeding us in this holy supper. Give us the will to serve others as Christ has served all. Amen. This brings us to Good Friday, the day Christ was crucified. Surely there is no bleaker moment in human history than when we decided it was expedient to kill our creator. But here again, Jesus defied our expectations and surprises us because as the name suggests, this horrible event turns out to be good. Not because of what happened on that day, but because God used that day to make us good by paying the price we deserve so we could be reconciled to God. It's the best, worst thing that ever happened. And that's the paradox of Good Friday, the irony of Good Friday. Evil really does exist, and suffering really does hurt. But God to, can take even the worst events and make them good. Unlike other religious figures, Jesus doesn't avoid suffering and sin. He absorbs them and transforms them into something good. Thank you. 